the Lord is there, the power is available. We still have this question, have we received the power of the Holy Ghost? For Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power. When he was baptized, the Holy Spirit came upon him and it lit upon him. The Holy Spirit remained upon him. He was never taken away. Jesus prayed the same prayer for you and me. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth. John 14, verse 16 to 17. The disciples had nothing to do with the anointing they received or the Spirit that abode forever upon them. Jesus died to make it possible and prayed the Father to send it upon them. After his death, resurrection and ascension, on the day of Pentecost, God answered the prayer of Jesus by sending the Holy Spirit upon them. Acts 2 My friends, when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we receive the same power that was upon Jesus when he walked on earth. The Holy Spirit upon that we received when we were baptized by the Holy Spirit is more than a tongue talker. Jesus said to the disciples, Behold, I will send you the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued or clothed with power from on high. Luke 24 verse 49 The promise of the Father is the Holy Spirit upon us that will never be taken away again. The disciples were already born again when Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. John 20 verse 22 They had the Holy Spirit inside them, but they did not have him upon them. They were not yet clothed or endued with power from on high. They received it at Pentecost. Chapter 7 The Promise of the Father Jesus said, It is the promise of my Father upon you. We have already received the promise of the Father in us, and we needed to receive the promise of the Father upon us. The heart cries of David to God that he should not take away the Holy Spirit from upon him. Psalm 51 verse 11 God answered his cries by a promise through the prophet Joel. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my Spirit. Joel 2 verse 28 to 29 the question is, when will that promise be fulfilled? Peter answers it for us in Acts 2. Pentecost is the coming of that promise of God, and Pentecost is only possible because of the perfect redemption God gave us by the death on the cross and the resurrection of Jesus. God's plan is not just to be in people, but to pour His Spirit upon them. Without the cross and the resurrection, there can be no Pentecost. It is a promise of the Father to pour out His Spirit upon us. Paul explains to us how we can obtain the promise of the Father. He takes the example of our father Abraham, who received the promise from God the Father that he would be the heir of the world. That promise was not made to Abraham through the law, meaning it was not because of the good deeds of Abraham contained in the law. It was not because Abraham fasted or gave alms or prayed long enough or read many scriptures or any other requirements of the law. But that promise of God the Father was made to Abraham through the righteousness of faith. Romans 4 verse 13 Abraham simply believed God, or put his faith in God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Romans 4 verse 6 Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed. Romans 4 verse 16 you and I have received the same righteousness that Jesus has because he died for us so that we can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Unless we believe that Jesus did it all for us to make it possible that the promise of God might be sure for all the seed, we will struggle in our faith. By seed, 
Paul means all those who are in Christ Jesus, for Jesus is the seed. Galatians 3 verse 16 we receive all the promises of God by grace through faith in the finished work of Jesus on our behalf. It is the only way to be sure that you will receive any promise of God. For if the inheritance be of the law, all the deeds of the law, it is no more a promise, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Galatians 3 verse 18 my friends, if we receive any promise of God because we fast more, we pray more, we read more scriptures, it is no longer a promise, it is now based on our works. Many Christians still stumble over that revelation. They want to add their good deeds of the law to the perfect redemption that Jesus bought with his life for us. When you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you receive the promise of the Father. You have received power from on high, not just a tongue. That is why you can have visions, dreams and prophecy. It is the promise of the Father to you. You do not have to call for the musician like Elisha did before you can prophesy. You do not have to sing 24-7 like in the tabernacle of David and the temple of Solomon so that the presence of God will be there. No! The presence of God or the faces of God is with you 24-7 and when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, all the power of the Godhead like in Genesis chapter 1 when creation happened is available to you now. All things are possible, be it done to you according to your faith. Matthew 9 verse 29 Chapter 8 The Lord is there, the glory is available. In the wilderness, the presence of the Lord was manifested by the pillar of cloud in the day and the pillar of fire in the night. Exodus 13 verse 21 The presence of the Lord in the congregation was always accompanied by His glory. The Jews named that kind of glory of God the Shekinah glory. When Moses went up to Mount Sinai to meet the Lord, Mount Sinai was altogether in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire, and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. Exodus 19 verse 18 The picture is like a volcano had erupted. Our God is in a consuming fire. Hebrews 12 verse 29 when the glory of God or the presence of God was in the midst of the people or when the Holy Spirit fell upon a person, they could feel it. The Hebrew word for glory is kabod, which means to be heavy, to make weighty. When the presence of God or the Spirit, which always comes with his glory, was upon a person, the person felt as if something heavy had been put upon them or a heavy hand was upon them. Therefore, when the prophets received the word from the Lord, when the Spirit came upon them, they set the burden of the Lord. Jeremiah 23 verse 33, Ezekiel 12 verse 10, Zechariah 9 verse 1, and Malachi 1 verse 1. They set the burden of the Lord because the prophecy came with the tangible glory of God when the Spirit fell on them to prophesy. Sometimes they will also say the hand of the Lord was upon them to say that the Spirit of God fell upon them and caused them to prophesy or see a vision. Ezekiel 33 verse 22 and Ezekiel 1 verse 3. When the presence of the Lord entered the temple or the Spirit of God entered the temple, it came with the glory of God. It was heavy and weighty. When Solomon dedicated the temple, the musicians sang. Then the temple was filled with a cloud, the Shekinah glory, so that the priest could not continue ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. 2 Chronicles 5 verse 13 to 14 I have experienced many times the tangible glory of the Lord or tangible presence of the Lord where I felt as if an electric charge was passing through my body or where I felt as if a hand was rubbing my head thus causing static electricity in my body. I have experienced also the case where I could not even open my mouth to speak or even get out of my bed for a couple of hours. 
I could not talk or even move my little toe. The only word that I whispered was, Jesus is Lord. God still does those sounds of pillars of fire and clouds entering a room. I remember when we were newly converted, we used to have a prayer night vigil every Friday. Our neighbours, who were idol worshippers, would see fire coming out of our roof, but we who were inside were simply praying and burning nothing. I also remember my elder brother and my younger brother. They were living in Senegal. Their landlord was a Muslim and an idol worshipper. She came and told my brothers that they should leave her house because their prayers were too hot for them. Whenever my brothers were praying, it was as if someone set the house on fire. My mother went to Ivory Coast for a conference for a company she worked for, and one of the men who was from the delegation of another country came up to her and told her she was the Lady of Fire. He said to my mummy that he only saw fire around her. This was an unsaved person. My mummy was not praying at that time. She was having a secular meeting. During the break, she went into the bar restaurant they had and sat beside a colleague that boasted about being in the occult. As soon as she sat, the man was sweating like a pig. Big drops of perspiration were on his face. He said to my mother in our native language, I did not know you were like that. You are a real fire. He left his seat and went to sit far away from my mummy. I started asking myself many questions, because that fire was not on us only when we were praying. Even when we were in our secular activities, the people in the occult and idol worshippers could see the fire and how hot it was. I prayed, God, explain this thing to me. Many times in the past I still functioned like in the Old Testament. I would wait for the feeling of the hand of the Lord upon me to give a prophecy. I would pray like in the Old Testament, God, let your presence come. I would pray like Moses, Lord, let your presence go with me. I did not have the revelation of Jehovah Shammah that the presence of the Lord was always with me and was always going with me. I prayed, God, send your Holy Spirit upon me. I did not know the Father had already sent his promise upon me when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will never be taken away from upon me. I prayed, let your presence fill this temple or this room. I did not know his presence was already there with me. Of course we can pray for a tangible manifestation of the presence of the Lord in clouds or a pillar of fire. These are part of the wonders of God, and we as sons and daughters of God are for signs and wonders with our elder brother Jesus Christ. Isaiah 8 verse 18 But I was still relying on my physical senses. Jesus Christ is the glory of God. All that Shekinah glory of the pillar of fire or the cloud was pointing to Jesus, who is the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person. Hebrews 1 verse 3 Jesus prayed to the Father for all who will believe in him, saying, The glory which you, Father, gave me, I have given to them, that they may be one, just as we are one. John 17 verse 22 Jesus has bestowed the same glory that was upon him upon us, but when will that take place? Moreover, whom God did predestine, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. Romans 8 verse 30 our justification and our glorification happened when Christ rose from the dead and we were risen together with him. Colossians 2 verse 12 When we are born again, we die together with Christ to sin and to the body of sin and we are made alive or raised together with him for our justification and our glorification. The Jesus that lives in us now is not the Jesus who died in weakness, for though he was crucified through weakness, yet he lives by the power of God. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 4 It is a glorified Jesus who lives in us. John saw him and this is how he described him.
His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And, behold, I am alive for evermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Revelation 1, verse 14 to 18. This is a Jesus who lives inside you and me, a glorified Jesus full of power and fire. No wonder those who are unsaved see fire over us or sweat like pigs, for his feet burn in a furnace, his eyes are flames of fire, and his countenance is the sun shining in its strength. There is nothing hotter than the sun. Anything that comes close enough is melted. This is a Jesus who lives in you. It is because he lives in you that you are glorified. Paul wants us to take hold of this revelation of the glorification, that the same glory that God gave Jesus has given that glory to us, because he now lives in us, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1 verse 27 Paul even goes to the extent of praying so that God will help us understand the glory that is in us. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge or full discernment of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding or a mental putting together. Colossians 1 verse 9 Paul knew that God, who at sundry times, or in many portions, or in many fragments, and in diverse manners, or in diverse methods, in many ways and diverse styles, spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Hebrews 1 verse 1 God used many shadows and many symbols to talk to the fathers through the prophets. So whenever the people read the Bible, it was a mystery or hidden truth. It was incumbent upon Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ, to mentally put together all these fragments of truth the prophets of old had, so that we can have a better understanding of what the plan of God was from the beginning, how he fulfilled it, who we are, and what we are in Christ so that we will stop chasing after shadows, because Jesus, who is the body or substance, has come, that you might walk worthy of the Lord, unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge or full discernment of God. Colossians 1 verse 10 Strengthened with all might, the kind of strength, the explosion that dynamite can release, according to his glorious power, the kind of power that is released when a volcano comes out of the crater, unto all patience and long-suffering with joyfulness. Colossians 1 verse 11 What Paul is telling the church is that the glory of God that came on Mount Sinai in the day of Moses, where it looked like the volcano had just erupted from Mount Sinai, that kind of power, but better, is now in you, when the glorified Christ took his abode inside you. Christ in you is that hope of glory. Colossians 1 verse 27 The voice of Jesus that comes out of your mouth through his word that you speak is powerful and causes the enemy to tremble. It is like the voice of many waters and two-edged swords come out of your mouth to slay the enemy for the glorified Jesus speaks in you. When Jesus was on earth, he said, I live by the Father. The Father who dwells in me does the work. John 14 verse 10 He believed that God spoke through him. God was teaching through him. 
It should be our attitude and way of thinking. It is the glorified Jesus who lives in us, who does the work, who speaks through us and who teaches through us. When Peter and John healed the lame man, Peter said to the crowd, Why do you marvel at this? Or, Why look so intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? God glorified Jesus and his name, through faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you know and see. Acts 3 verse 12 to 16 Peter understood glorification, that it was the glorified Jesus Christ living in him who performed the miracle. It was not the power of Peter, or the godliness of Peter, or the fasting of Peter, or the prayer of Peter, but the glorified Jesus. Christ Jesus is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 24 the message of the cross or the gospel, what Christ did for us by his death and resurrection, is the power of God. Romans 1 verse 16 Paul tells us, O oh, foolish Galatians, who bewitched you not to obey the truth, to whom before your eyes Jesus Christ was written among you crucified? This only I would learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law, by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, do you now perfect yourself in the flesh? Did you suffer so many things in vain, if indeed it is even in vain? Then God, who supplies the Spirit to you, and working powerful works in you, is it by works of the law or by hearing of faith? Galatians 3 verse 1 to 5 Of course it is by the hearing of faith that God supplied his Spirit unto us and works powerful miracles in us and through us. For it is God who works in you both to will and do for his good pleasure. Philippians 2 verse 13 since the presence of God is with us and in us, and God has anointed us with the Holy Spirit and power when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Jesus tells us then, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10 verse 19 he promised Peter the keys of the kingdom, saying, And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Matthew 16 verse 19 Peter understood that now that Jesus had died and is now glorified by God, this promise is now true. Therefore Peter acted on that knowledge and allowed Jesus, who now lives in him, to do the miracle. Technically, you and I do not have any authority and power. As it is written, Jesus, after his resurrection, came and spoke unto them, saying, All authority and all power, the Greek word exousia, authority and power, legal authority to exercise power, is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go, therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20. So God gave all authority and power unto the resurrected Jesus Christ in heaven, the third heaven where the Godhead, the angels, the saints that have gone to glory are, the second heaven where Satan and his demons are, and on earth. And that resurrected Christ Jesus dwells in you. God dwells in him, and the Holy Ghost dwells in you. Therefore, you are going into the world in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And lo, Jehovah Shammah is with you always unto the end of the world. The presence of the Lord goes with you always, even unto the end of the world. Since the resurrected Christ Jesus has been given all authority and all power, 
it means that you and I have no personal power and no personal authority if you are born again Christians. As Peter explained, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? God glorified Jesus and his name, through faith in his name has made this man strong, whom you know and see. Acts 3 verse 12 to 16. So, if we do not have our own power or own authority, but all authority and all power is in the glorified or resurrected Christ Jesus, and we are going to the people in his name, not in our own name, it means that all the power and all the authority in heaven and earth is in us, since that glorified Jesus Christ dwells in us. He is the Anointed One, and the Holy Spirit is anointing is in us, and God the Father is in Jesus. All things are possible to us because we believe in the glorified Jesus Christ and use His name to perform miracles, not our own name. Mark 9 verse 23 It is the same resurrected Christ who dwells in every born-again Christian. It is the same Holy Spirit that dwells in every born-again Christian and the same promise of the Father that every born-again Christian has received when they were baptized in the Spirit. And it is the same Father God that dwells in Christ Jesus who dwells in every born-again Christian. So it is the same Jehovah Shammah who dwells inside every born-again Christian with all authority and all power. An apostle, a prophet, a pastor, an evangelist or teacher has no more authority and power than any other born-again Christian. We all have received all authority and all power in heaven and earth that is in Christ Jesus. That is why Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He who believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. John 14 verse 12 to 14 It works because it is God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost who works in every born again believer, both to give them the willingness and all power and all authority in heaven and earth to do the same work Jesus did. Philippians 2 verse 13 the devil and his agents have no legal authority whatsoever. He is a thief and a robber. He has ability or power, but no legal authority. When, for instance, a city is run by mafia groups, they collect taxes from shops and people for protection. They have usurped the authority of the government in that city. Queen Athalia in 2 Kings 11 murdered all the sons of the king and usurped authority over the kingdom. She ruled in the land of Judah for six years till Joash came and rightfully claimed his throne. If a born-again Christian willfully practices sin, he becomes slave of it and Satan becomes his master. Romans 6 verse 18 to 20 if you are overcome by a particular sin, you are in bondage, even slavery to that sin. 2 Peter 2 verse 19 That is why for us Christians, sin should no longer have dominion over us. Satan has power to oppress people, but he has no legal authority over their souls, body and spirit. He usurped that authority, it is illegal. Only Jesus has all legal authority and all power either to give them eternal life or cast them into hellfire. Satan has power to oppress people with sickness and disease, to destroy and to kill. John 10 verse 10 But that is all he can do. 
Jesus, on the other end, has all authority and all power, even power to undo what the devil did, to heal all manner of sickness, all manner of disease, and raise the dead. Jesus tells us, Fear not those who kill the body, the devil, his agents, and his evil works, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him, God, who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Matthew 10, verse 28. I live, says the Lord God. You shall not have occasion any more to use this proverb in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sins, it shall die. Ezekiel 18, 3-4. The little power that Satan, his demons, his agents, and his evil works have are of no match to all the power in heaven and on earth that has been given to Jesus Christ. Jesus tells us, Because I, Jesus, the resurrected Christ, dwell in you, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10 verse 19 So, since all the power and authority in heaven and earth is given unto Jesus Christ, you are legally empowered to destroy all the power of Satan, our enemy. The God of peace will bruise Satan under your feet in the name of Jesus. Romans 16 verse 20 For this purpose, you, as a son or daughter of God, have been made manifest to destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3 verse 8